Mercy Project has been working in the villages of Ghana for the last two years to educate villagers on new ways of fishing. And each trip had a sole purpose, to finally get the villagers on their feet financially so that one day Chris Field and his team at Mercy Project could walk out of a village with children who were no longer slaves. Tonight, I bring you never-before-seen footage from Atavupe. It might be hard to see at first glance, but in the horizon, hope begins on Lake Volta. This trip is so significant for us because until you actually do a rescue, you're, you're hoping and dreaming and you got an idea that you hope works, but until you actually walk out of the village with those kids, there's no way to be able to say, yeah, this is what we've been doing for two years, you know? I mean, there's just no way to do that. But when we walk out of the village, it's the first time we're gonna be able to say, we've not been working for nothing. I mean, this is, this is what we've been doing for two years and it worked. Members of the Mercy Project demonstrate a capacity to love that is rare, refreshing, and breathtakingly beautiful. These people are devoting their life to children they've never met. We want to help the trafficked children in this village have a better future. What's even more compelling is the compassion and concern for the slave masters. And we want to do economic empowerment for this community. Rather than swooping in to rescue a group of trafficked children who will, in return, be replaced by more. We'll continue helping you with cages and making sure that we grow those fish and harvest them and take them to market to make some money for your village. For the last two years, Mercy Project has been on the ground building trust. From the first time we came in this village, uh, you've received us as your friends. And fostering a lifetime of relationships filled with hope inside a very dark place. Finding a means to an end is through education, which consequently will provide each and every master with alternate means to earn incomes that no longer rely on children. Our goal from here is that the children will go to a place where they'll begin their education. Not only are these children being granted a better future, so are the men and the women who enslave them. Now they can be proud of the facts that they have these cages, that they're monitoring these cages, they're taking care of these cages, they're growing these fish, and because of that, they're able to release the children voluntarily, so they weren't forced to do anything. And on the first time on the day a village is to carry out their promise, scarred souls are embraced with hope. 24 trafficked children watch their slave masters voluntarily surrender. The entire community was there for the send-off. And so we begin this procession down to the boats. There's 24 kids and they have no idea really what's happening. And it was just this, I mean, it was really a kind of a surreal moment. How do you describe that culmination in this procession of 24 kids who are literally making this freedom walk from being captive to becoming free? For Ruth, Letitia, Daniel and 21 others inside this boat, they're no longer slaves, rather living stories of freedom. For many of you wondering what happens next for these children, many of the kids we rescued have malaria and many have been plagued with parasites and different diseases after drinking the lake water for so many years. Today, they're receiving medical care and probably right as we speak, they're sleeping in a bed that, for the very first time, they can call their own. Back to you.